Hello and welcome to Cloud Data Breaches Have Identity Roots. Today's webinar is sponsored by Zilla Security and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Scott Becker. I'm from Actual Tech Media and I'm excited to be, to be bringing you this fireside chat style conversation. Now, before we get to today's great content, we do have a th uh, three housekeeping items that will help you get the most out of this session. First off, I'd like to draw your attention to the questions box in your console. We'd love to see where you're all logging in from. Some of you have been saying hello in there already, which is great. Keep those coming. We also really want this to be an informative event for you. So we encourage any questions in the questions box as well. We've got lots of team members standing by from Zilla Security to type in answers to any questions that you have. Now be aware this event is gonna run for about half an hour. So don't wait too long to put those questions in. Throw them in there when you have them. Oh, and one other thing about the question, there's a $50 prize for the best question of the session. After the event is over, the actual tech media team will look through all the questions that came in, decide on the best question and send that person an Amazon gift card. So just one more reason to let loose and ask that question that's on your mind. The Q&A panel is also the place to let us know about any technical issues that you might be experiencing. A browser refresh will fix most audio, video, or slide advancement issues, but if that doesn't work, just let us know there in the Q&A and we'll provide further technical assistance. Now second, in the handout section of your webinar control panel, you'll find that we're offering several resources. I'd especially like to call your attention to some valuable PDFs from Zilla. One is identifying the chinks in your security armor with holistic identity management. This is a quick read, but it's got some depth. At six pages, it sets up four critical chinks in identity armor as well as some fixes. Really nice resource. Then there's also an infographic on common mistakes, and that's got details on some of the real world breaches that you'll hear about during today's conversation. So I encourage you to access those resources now and share them with your friends and colleagues. Now, third and final housekeeping item, at the end of this webinar event, we will be awarding a $250 Amazon gift card to one lucky registrant. Of course, you must be in attendance during the uh, live event to qualify for the prize. Official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can also be found in your handout section. Just scroll down to the bottom and you'll find the prize terms and conditions link there. Okay, with that, let's get to today's important conversation. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenters today. We have Deepak Tanahe, who's CEO and co-founder of Zilla, Zilla Security. And then we have Loudon Williams, who's founder of SILTHW, and he'll tell you what that means here in a sec. They'll both tell you a little bit more than, about themselves in a minute. And before we get started, we've got a poll for you, just to level set a bit. So. How would you rate the maturity of your organization's identity security practices? First option is strong. We have things locked down. Okay, but improving. Smoldering, but not on fire. And then foam the runway. I hope nobody's in the foam the runway category, but we'll let that poll run for a little bit and, uh, and you can kind of let us know where you stand. Um, and while I give you a little time to respond on that, let me just set up the conversation that we're going to hear today. So, you know, the news is, is full of breaches stemming from the inability of companies to manage identity effectively. And there are three common failures with cloud identity. You know, if you make any of these mistakes, it can compromise your security in ways that make recovery and remediation difficult, if not impossible. First one, not understanding the impacts of new cloud identity and access models. Second one, not governing third party trust. Third one, not managing machine identities. So this talk between two identity security experts is gonna provide prescriptive guidance on ensuring that your cloud identity strategy is solid and serves as a critical foundation for how best to secure the cloud. And I've seen the agenda for their conversation is gonna be really valuable. I'm eagerly looking forward to it. So before we kick over to that, let's see what we got in results for the poll here. Looks like it was, uh, most people are comfortable saying that they're okay, but improving. That was at 53% at, uh, at this point. Um, second choice was strong. We have things locked down. Our, our confident group is, is in the 24% range. Smoldering, but not on fire. We had 16% uh, admitting to that. And then 5% uh, are foaming the runway. So uh, great poll. Thanks to everybody who responded to that. Really appreciate it. That was a, that was a fun one. 
Okay, well, let's get into this conversation. And uh, if you are smoldering or, or foaming the runway, there, there'll there be a lot in here for you, but there's going to be a lot for, for those of you in the okay but improving category. All right, let's get to it. Hello, I'm Lawton Williams, and I'm the founder of SILTHW, or Stuff I Learned the Hard Way. We focus on lessons hard learned and wisdom hard gained. And today, we're going to look at those lessons hard learned and wisdom hard gained when it comes to identity management. And I am pleased to have with me today Deepak Taneja, who is the co-founder of Zillow Security. And Deepak, just for a moment, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Thanks, Lavin. It's great to be here. Yes, I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder at Zillow Security. I've been in the identity space for 25 plus years, multiple startups. It's a great space to be in. I'm super excited to be talking about uh, about identity security and data breaches today. Well, that's great. And, and of course, you and I had a conversation ahead of time, but I think it's worth talking about. This is a big, hot topic right now. In fact, right now, as we record this in the news is a major hack of user accounts all over YouTube to post the Elon Musk Bitcoin scam. And we're seeing this more and more now where identity is compromised. People are using data from the dark web. Uh, they're targeting specific users and attempting to capture their security and identity information. Uh, and this is pervasive. This isn't a new problem. In fact, I think when we talked before, we thought that maybe by now we would have gotten a little bit better at it. But it doesn't feel like we have really. And, and in fact, I would say one thing, and that's that in this cloud era, one of the big promises of the cloud era was going to be cloud was going to become this wonderful forcing function. It was going to cause us to rethink all of this. And we were going to get identity right from scratch in the cloud. But I suspect you have a different opinion on where we are in reality now. Yeah, Loudon, you're exactly right. There's, um, you know, we hear about data breaches in the news just about every single day. And you can track most of them uh, back to identity roots. Um, and um, the cloud has changed so much. Uh, a, a lot of the fundamentals about identity are the same, but uh, the cloud has changed a lot. And I think we're still grappling with, across the industry, with um, changes in the fundamental model, the cloud identity and access model, um, changes in responsibilities, because um, it's a it's a new world, and um, uh, organizationally, a lot of enterprises aren't really well prepared to to deal with with that single identity fabric and and all of the uh, issues around that fabric with respect to not just um, the old classic issues of of giving people access or complying with regulations, but also with security, because um, as as we all as we all know, identity is the new security perimeter um, and in the cloud. And, and so folks are folks are grappling with that. And I think there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues um, inside organizations just in terms of getting their arms around uh, identity and access to prevent breaches, because uh, I think that's that's where it's all showing up in the end is is enterprise assets being being exposed one way or the other. Yeah, it's 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 interesting I think and 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 I'd love to get your thoughts on this as well. I call these location problems or the location fallacy, which is hey, you know, I don't do this really well today in my enterprise. Maybe simply by relocating everything I'm doing from my enterprise to the cloud, it's going to magically get fixed. But that that's not what we're seeing, right? It's not what we're seeing at all. In fact, it feels like what we're really seeing is the same exact problems we've had in the enterprise moving to the cloud, but yet we're seeing additional problems over and above those types of problems. So uh, what, what's your take on this? Do you think it's a little bit of us doing the same thing we've always done, or are we creating net new problems, or is it a little bit of both when it comes to cloud? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I think um, fundamentally with the cloud, um, you know, what what um, folks um are are struggling with is 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 first the responsibility issue who's responsible for yes. what so we have this shared responsibility model in the cloud um and um you know organizations sort of are are starting to realize that 
identity and access is mostly the enterprise's responsibility, not the cloud service provider's responsibility. Uh, and then within the enterprise, um, there's sort of this organizational divide between the um, sort of the classic IAM team, which has dealt with things like provisioning and deprovisioning, you know, the joiner, joiner, mover, lever kinds of issues. And then this new team that has sort of come up in the last five or six years, which is the the cloud security team, right? And, uh, you know, and of course, um, the classic IAM team was also worried about governance and compliance, but now all of this needs to come together in some sense, right? As we said, identity is the new perimeter. And so first and foremost, in some sense, it's become a security issue. And yet organizationally, uh, folks still kind of deal with identity in silos and, and we need to, we need to figure that out, right? Um, at the, at the C level in a company, the CISO level or the CIO level, there has to be this realization that somehow all these teams need to be working closely together because it's one IAM fabric. It's one unified thing. Uh, right. And so that's, that's, that's a real problem that we've got to grapple with. Yeah, I, I I love that model too because and I'll tell you just in my own professional experience when I work with customers I actually see that a lot and I think the assumption for those uh, control teams that work on cloud security controls is they are authenticated ad so they they pick up as the authentication guys did everything right so so now now we got a, a strongly authenticated user who we know who they are and we can do the rest of the stuff. But it sounds like what you're talking about a bit is maybe we have to question that whole part about I have a strongly authenticated user and it feels like and and I hope I'm not stealing your phrasing here, but I think it's the the way that you talked about it is, is there's a governance aspect to this that's really problematic that we tend to gloss over. And I think based on everything you said, I think we're in agreement that the cloud hasn't made that easier. It might have even made it a bit more complicated than it was before because we've segmented those. People don't think of it as a continuum anymore. They think of it as little siloed roles and capabilities. And so it's, it sounds like if, I, if I'm interpreting that, uh, I think we're in, in agreement on that because it, it is a real problem. And, and I think it's not just a problem in the pure identity management sense. We're also in a world where federation, third parties, vendors are a major part of how we work today. And, and, and that whole aspect of it has become problematic. I mean, we've seen supply chain attacks that are caused by third party trust problems. From, from, your, from your seat, what do you see going on, especially around that third party trust area right now? Yeah, I think you're spot on. So I think that, you know, you refer to those silos. It's this there's this, the cloud has brought this interconnectedness yeah. into the enterprise, which, uh, which is new, right? Um, so uh, the interconnectedness of identity and those, those um, sort of authentication tokens that are trusted across the board, transitive trust, identity federation, SAML, open ID connect, uh, you know, cross account roles. And this interconnectedness is very is very valuable because it you know it, it allows us to to leverage um sort of modules across the organization but it can create a lot of a lot of problems if there isn't good governance as you pointed out and if there isn't good if there aren't good security controls and the third party uh you know supply chain problems you mentioned uh, there's so many of them in the industry so many breaches a lot of them can be traced back to 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 this to this fundamental issue of interconnectedness, third party trust. So I mean, if you um, go back a couple of years and think about the the Solar Winds breach that was talked about ad nauseum, uh, it has elements of all of that, right? The third party trust. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you think about how the attackers actually went and placed the. Um, uh, the malware inside the Orion software that um, the module that SolarWinds had, and then how that module was trusted by hundreds and thousands of companies and federal agencies, and it found its way inside those organizations and then wreaked havoc, right? So, um, so I mean, I, I think it's all that that interconnectedness of things in the 
identity and access fra- fabric that we have that perhaps starts with with a directory or some notion of authentication, as you mentioned, and then from there, you know, grows to all right. Well, which is the account that this this identity has, whether it's a person or a service account or a machine? Uh, what are the access keys? What are the credentials? What are the and then what are the entitlements? And and then what is the access that um, perhaps uh, some down the line roles and policies provide this? provide this identity. So uh, as we all know, um, you know, platforms like AWS uh, have have a very complex model and there's uh, there's a lot of uh, chaining of of policies and roles that can give provide unintended access and and can actually be leveraged by attackers for all kinds of privilege escalation. So um so it's a you know, it a, a solution an environment like this sort of is begging for a a single automated approach to to managing identity and access, and I think that's what most organizations haven't quite gotten to yet. Yeah, I I, I can't agree with you more on that. I mean, that, that's exactly I I think where we see the challenges, and and it is that complexity, right? If we think about how policies apply within the cloud space, even even within the enterprise space, how policies can get cascaded down through templates and automation, and we realize that they have to be orchestrated well together, because when you lay the who who can do what over the top of that. There's lots of ways that that system can fail. It can be, it could fail because we didn't do analysis and understand who gets what permission by being in what group. But going back again to third party trust, it could simply be that, hey, I trusted you, uh, not realizing that you trust a lot of other people and maybe my bar for what I need from you to ensure that you're, you're providing me with good authentication, good identity, um, is, is the same bar that you hold your vendors and your customers and others accountable to. And so now we've, we've got two sides of the problem. We've got this burdening problem or growing problem on one side, which is the complexity of, of our identity landscape, including third parties, vendors, et cetera. And then you've got this net new complexity that we're seeing with automated controls and templates. And how do you know that the two of these are merging together uh, to really solve the problem and, and keep us secure and that they're behaving the way that we expect them to behave, which seems really important. Loudon, another breach, um, another recent breach that reminds us of the identity governance challenges in the industry is the was the Okta breach from a few months ago. Uh, remember that had multiple angles to it. Um, do you want to speak to that for a moment? Well, sure. I, I think there's. Um, it, it's definitely worth talking about, considering they had two incidents in 2022. Uh, the first one, which I think was interesting, is a situation where, uh, and this really relates back to this governance theme, where a contractor from a third party set a password for an account that was ultimately used to breach Okta. Um, and while the the damage was small, they were able to constrain it and contain it. I think it just goes to show that even even those of us that are professionals in this industry really have to be diligent uh, diligent, excuse me, about our end to end identity governance. But again, they ran into a second problem as recently as December, where uh, untrusted users were able to gain access to their GitHub, and they were able to to get access to source code. And, and that's problematic as well, because when we think about third-party trust, a lot of what we're doing nowadays are trusting companies like Okta to manage our identity and federated authentication. And if they compromise, if they're compromised, if that source code reveals a way to get at details or data of users, and especially if it allows them to discover an exploit that allows them to impersonate users, we have a major source of identity and authentication that's used broadly throughout the entire world, potentially compromised. And so this governance aspect becomes absolutely critical. It can't be thought of in little pieces and parts. It has to be looked at systemically across the entire uh, the entire enterprise. That's right. That interconnectedness we spoke about makes these governance issues uh, even more important. They sure do. Can I trust the person or the people that my my partners trust? 
which is an interesting sort of transient trust problem that we see routinely all over the place nowadays. You said something else, which I think is really important to bring into this conversation. And that's the other thing we're seeing grow tremendously within the cloud is machine identities or service identities, pipeline identities. There, there are all these new identities that are cropping up within the cloud world that didn't used to exist. And so now we're seeing that identity landscape apply not just to humans, but this massive number of, of machine and endpoints. And from your from your viewpoint, what's that doing to us? I mean, how is this what how's this impacting our ability to keep our organization secure? Yeah, it's it's complicating life dramatically, right? Because um uh particularly organizations that are that are doing their own development, you know, with digital transformation, everyone's now building apps. And so you have these with these infrastructure platforms like AWS, GCP, Azure, and so on in play and use, the number of machine identities is dwarfing the number of people identities, right? And and that makes governance uh, a whole lot more complicated. It's, it's not just about users anymore, employees or consultants. You now have servers and serverless functions and uh, or codes, you know, storage nodes, and they can all have roles and and privileges uh and you know yeah uh, they have access keys and uh, you know other credentials for authentication but but they all have roles and privileges privileges and they don't necessarily live in a central identity store like a, a directory right so right. um um they're ephemeral so you you know again it requires a, a lot of upfront thought and 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 a lot of automation to stay on top of exactly what's going on and what can happen in my in my environment right um and you know to link that to your the point you made earlier about third party trust and so on again if you think about how an organization the typical enterprise is set up today you know there's a there's perhaps a grc team that has a third party charter right and perhaps they might look at um you know, applications that get brought into the organization or or any any piece of software that's brought in initially. But after that, most of the time, you know, the software gets deployed and and you know, no one's really tracking exactly how that how that software is being used or whether there's um how many accounts are in there, what permissions they've been assigned. So you you know there's again organizationally, I think uh, as an industry, we're not quite. Um, we don't have that holistic view of of third party identity and access that we really need. You know, you've got to you've got to evaluate that third party, but then you've got to make sure that, that that third party is is enabling you to to maintain a secure posture. And I think we're not doing that. It's such a it's such an interesting point. You know, it's it's funny when I work with a lot of my customers who are going through sort of these DT changes. What we see, for example, is they'll scan software to determine its open source license type, with a primary concern of not giving away the keys to the kingdom by inadvertently deploying, uh, you know, open source software to some front end system that a customer has direct access to that might cause them, you know, concerns over the license. So they're checking those licenses. They're trying to make sure they don't get in trouble from a license perspective. But there's not a lot of checking the code and not a lot of can we trust the code? Can we trust how this code is updated? Can we trust that the developers are, are doing strong authentication for the contributors, that we know who they are, that they're trusted, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, 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 it's this growing challenge that we see all over. But it, it sounds like, I mean, I think, I think we are clear on the challenge, right? But, but how do we pull this together? I mean, what's a good way for us to think about how we begin to get our hands around this and really shape the problem into something that we can solve. Yeah, you know, I think that um, um, it, it all, it, you know, fundamentally it, it, it has become with the adoption growing as quickly as it is and the, um, the threat surface growing as quickly as it is. And, and your, you know, people don't um, quite realize it, but your identity and access vulnerabilities are your threat surface and that's why that's why you see all these uh data breaches that have that have identity groups yes. um so between it's impossible to track 
your identities, your permissions, your access security settings, your access keys, your certificates. You know, we're dealing with overload here that's impossible to track without automation. Um, you know, the the uh, excessive permissions that are granted to users without business need, the service accounts that are sitting around, the third parties that seem to have privileged access, misconfigurations in your in your cloud environment. And there's no, you know, you IT and the IT security team itself perhaps can only be responsible for a fr small fraction of of the uh, of the IT environment. More and more. Uh, applications are being brought in by business teams and the growth in SaaS is huge. Um, so I think it all starts with this realization that uh, there needs to be um, an automated solution in place that's working with multiple stakeholders in the organization. Of course, the security team, the IT team, the compliance team, uh, the DevOps team, but then just like the DevOps team, uh, there's all the other application owners for the various SaaS stacks in the organization. They all have a role to play. Even supervisors in the organization have a role to play because they have context about what their what their employees should have access to. So you sort of need uh, um, all of something that enables all of these folks to collaborate, and yet is constantly on top of. Um, the the reality of the security posture in the organization that's helping helping the organization both get to a secure posture in collaboration with those stakeholders, but also to maintain that that secure posture, right? Yeah, and and, and, I, and I like the way you laid that out. So we need governance. We agree we need governance, but we also recognize that there's a human element to governance that sometimes can fail us. <laughs> so. It's we need governance, but we need tooling that thinks about this systemically. These aren't point problems. And I think maybe that's a little bit of a problem we found ourselves in as we take little point solution problems to each of these little aspects. And, and if I'm hearing you right, and I think I am, uh, it needs to be systemic. We have to think about it end to end, but we also need to think about how we validate this and get a little bit of the human out of the loop so that we're being consistent in the way that we apply this. Uh, we can prove that these systems work and we can trust in these systems as we move forward. Did I say that close? Yes. That's that's perfect. You're 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 absolutely right. Um, you know, the there's a lot of context that lies with with people, and that's where the the governance comes in, that's where the policies come in, that's where the collaboration comes in. And yet without automation, these these folks will not be able to get the job done. Um, and this is where I think over time, um, AI and machine learning are going to step into the mix, right? Uh, we'll still need the context that those folks have, but more through automation, through AI-driven automation, I think more of more and more of the manual work will be will be will be done by by software, right? But in the meantime, I think organizations really need to start with um, with an automated solution, but start with the basics. You know, the basics are first get MFA everywhere, right? There's there's no reason uh to to have MFA gaps, you know, offboard flawlessly. There's no reason to leave uh zombie accounts lying all over the place and sensitive data lying all over the place. You're asking for for account takeovers that then lead to all kinds of all kinds of issues. Secure your third parties, secure your supply chain, you know, follow that end to end. Don't just, you know come up with a program that that examines the third party relationship up front but but track what's happening with um with uh, the access and the identities that that those uh, relationships um um you know end up end up creating and then focus on sort of the key vulnerabilities in your infrastructure platform in your your in identity vulnerabilities in your saas in your SaaS stacks, um, you know, the external access, the unintended access, the service accounts, the orphan accounts, the um, unused access. Um, so I think sort of a step-by-step -step approach, you know, uh, take a holistic view of identity, view it in a unified way, appreciate that interconnectedness, um, stop thinking of identity in silos, then think of automation to to lock down your your identity security posture 
uh, and track changes. It's not just about getting to a secure posture. It's about maintaining that posture. And that's all about change management. And then get into the basics around MFA, offboarding, and so on. Thank you so much for this conversation. I really want to thank Deepak for joining me today. I, I think the keys here are this. Identity is one of the most fundamental parts of security in your organization. You have to take it serious. You have to think about it more as simply you authenticate and then you need to think of it systemically with the growth of machine identities, the growth and necessity of third party trust. All of this should be thought about from an end to end governance model and automate it as much as possible. We hope you join us in the future for more conversations like this. Again, thank you, Deepak. It was a great conversation. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Loudon. Okay, yeah, and thanks to, to Loudon and Deepak for a really informative discussion there. And, and thanks to the Zilla security team for the responses in the, in the chat. We really appreciate your time today. And just a quick reminder that if you want some more information about what you've heard in this conversation, do grab those PDFs in the handouts. All right, well, before we wrap up, we have one more piece of business, and that is the Amazon gift card prize drawing. And the winner of the $250 Amazon gift card is Dale Funkhauser from California. So congratulations to Dale Funkhauser. We'll be in touch to get you your card. And with that, on behalf of the actual tech media team, I want to thank Zilla Security for making this event possible. And thanks, as always, for attending and for your great questions. That's going to conclude today's event. Have a fantastic rest of your day.